Welcome to Technology for Busy Teachers for intuitive and efficient classroom solutions. Today we're going to look at edapp.com. When you open up edapp, you'll first see your dashboard here with uh, different courses that you may have created already. But today we're going to look at how to create a new course. So go up and click create a new course, type in the name. And after that, you'll be able to create lessons inside that course. So let's create a lesson, give it a name, call it introduction. Okay, so here's a little preview of what it's going to look like on a phone. So let's edit the lesson content. First thing to do is to give it a title, obviously. I'm going to call this one Joseon History. I'm using Korean History. The well, first thing is, how can we give information? We have all these different types of activities that we can add into it. First, I'm going to add some content. And there are multiple ways to deliver content. I like to use this one that's got images. So here we go. So I'm just going to add some images and then some accompanying text to give the students the information that I want them to know. You see, I'm just dragging the images over from my desktop and I'm inputting the information below it, as you see. You can also add audio, as you see here, add audio, but we're not going to do that this time. And let me just give you a little preview of what this will look like. Always save, save the document. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looked like. The images will come up, they click on each image, and there'll be a line of text below. Click and read, click and read, and at the bottom, after reading each one, they'll be given a prompt to continue. Next, let's add some quiz portion to this. There are, again, there are multiple different types of uh, quiz questions we can ask them to reinforce knowledge, but I'm just going to use a basic multiple choice for this one. Again, we're just inputting some information. So we ask a question, and then, very importantly, you can always add some feedback at the bottom. So the student will look, they can read the question, who invented the Korean alphabet, they choose the correct answer or incorrect answer, and they'll get feedback. That's correct. And then we can give some extra information below. Next, let's make a new slide for uh, matching. Another kind of activity we can do is what they call relationships, but in this case it's matching. You can either draw lines between things, or you can match pictures to sentences or pictures to pictures. Again, I'm going to add these pictures very quickly from my desktop. I'm going to add some text in there. And I'm actually going to get rid of the answer text in this case because I don't think it's useful for this this kind of activity, but in your case it may be to give more feedback or more information. So feel free to do it the way that you would like to do it. Okay, checking everything is fine. And then go over here and practice with it. We can see if we if we take the image of the admiral here, we can drop him right on that, the king and the hete. Now, one thing I like to do is reject answers, especially for small children or first time students. That way, if I grab the wrong picture, it will not accept the answer. That's a nice way to make sure the students always are learning from their mistakes. Okay, saving again. And the last thing I want to do is add a game, a review game in here. This allows the students to test their knowledge. You can put some time constraints on it, and you can also make it competitive where the students are competing against each other or against themselves. Uh, multiple types of games here again. Um, I'm just going to go with a simple like memory card game style. I like this one a lot. Okay, we'll add in the data as before. And then let's check the functionality. This is what students will see on their phones. trying to match them within the time limit. Of course, you can expand the time limit if you'd like. 
when they're done they'll receive a score and they can choose to do it again or they could go on to the end of the lesson now a final thing for you as a teacher is how to share so if you go back to the heading of the lesson to introduction go to access rules easiest way to share it is to just click this and get the link students with the link can then access the content and learn Thanks for joining me at Technology for Busy Teachers. Like, comment, and subscribe for more of this content.